This is Spiritual Parallels to the Natural Body, Lesson 19. And we have been looking at the receptors in the body. Uh, and because it's such an important truth, we've talked about giving and receiving and it being taken out of the realm of the finances, although that is very, very important. We can give and give and give and give in the natural. We can give of our finances and yet not be receiving what God has for us. And not re, uh, because there's something in us resisting what the Spirit of God is saying or what the Spirit of God is wanting to impart or the vision of God for our lives. And so we're going to look at a number of scriptures today um, on the receptors and the importance of receiving, not just giving, but the importance of receiving. In Deuteronomy 33, verse 3, Yea, he loved the people, all his saints are in thy hand, and they sat down at thy feet. Every one shall receive of thy words. Now, I want to go back and reemphasize what Jesus said. He said, The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Let, let me uh, translate that into experiential. The words I speak unto you, they are vehicles of spirit and life. And that spirit and life goes into your spirit. And so when, when God is speaking to us uh, personally, in our own personal devotions, in our own time, he is imparting spirit and life. When God is speaking to us through a prophetic word, either the gift of prophecy or the, from the office of the prophet, he is imparting spirit and life. And it's important that we honor that, that we not only honor it, but uh, we set up the filters of the Word of God to judge the prophetic word by. But I need also not to let those uh, tools of discernment, let's call it that, the tools of discernment block what God is saying. Remember that God does not always speak in a uh, language that you and I would understand. He often speaks uh, in parables. Uh, and, and there's a passage of Scripture that we need to look at there that I hope will help us uh, And it's in Proverbs. Um, let me get there quickly. It says, I, I want us to see it, not just for me to read it, but um, in Proverbs 25 and verse 2. Let's go there uh, on our screen. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but it's the honor of kings to search out the matter. Now, I want to speak about that for a moment uh, because I really believe that we need to recognize that God is making of us kings and priests. That's, that's the, whole, uh, the whole thrust, as it were, of Proverbs, is God is making of us kings. We are in training for the throne. And all of Proverbs points towards the wisdom of that whole scenario. So it's the glory of God to conceal a thing. That's why he does not necessarily speak in literal words. Go and do this. This is your next step. But he will conceal it in a vision, in a dream, in a dark saying, 
or a cryptic saying, or in parables, or in what we have always called a story, an allegory. Song of Solomon is an allegory. Uh, and, and the, you know, there are those, uh, I personally believe Job was a literal person, but there are those who are saying, uh, and it's said among the rabbis, that Job is an allegory. Be that as it may, the principles there are extremely important. Uh, and and when we see that, we need to say, Lord, how do I search this out? I want to gain honor as one in training for a king. Would you lead me, Holy Spirit, lead me in searching out the matter? Because remember, only the Holy Spirit knows where the answers are. If the lesson comes... And, and the speaking comes from God <clears throat> in one of the multiple ways that he speaks. But it is not, quote, clear. And how many times have I said, God, I wish you'd speak clearly. Then God is wanting to draw out of us the kingship that he placed in us in its raw form. He's wanting to shape and form it. Uh, the kingship that he placed in us or the authority level that he placed in us in raw material when he formed us in the womb. Remember that God said to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I have, when I, before, thou, I, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and called you to be a prophet to the nations. Therefore, all of Jeremiah's training up until he was called at about the age of 23, all of that was training for the prophetic office or for, for the, the ministry and call that God had on his life. Everything you have been through or are going through is with God's purpose and God's destiny for your life and mind. Even when the enemy throws things at you and comes against you, remember that God makes all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. And so when the enemy attacks you, you, you say, Lord, uh, is this to shape and form me? Or is this to teach my hands to war and my fingers to fight? And then I need to let God lead me in how I respond to all of that. There is a need for us to receive the words of the Lord. Many hear the words thinking that is enough. It is not. There must be an act of receiving of the words of the Lord. Lord, help me do that act of receiving. Amen. I need you to show me that act of receiving. In Job 2 and 10, But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one, as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Many today attribute all the evil they're going through as punishment from God, for something done wrong. Job had experienced good at the hand of the Lord. When God tries to give his people good today, many try and refuse it or do refuse it. God desires to give us good. We must ask God to prepare our hearts to receive the good. James 1 and 17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness neither shadow of turning. There needs to be a receiving, an attitude of receiving from the Lord. Once I know it's God, I need to say, Lord, teach me. Show me how to receive properly in this so that I receive what you desire and not what I desire. 
Job 22 and verse 22, Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his words in thine heart. I have to... I have to receive something to lay it up in the storeroom of my heart. It's not enough to hear it. But there is a receiving that the Holy Spirit, in some senses, must teach us how to do. In Psalm 24 and verse 5, He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. In other words, God wants to give blessing and he wants to give righteousness right standing with God and right standing with man. In Proverbs, uh, there's a whole, by the way, there's a whole bunch that could be taught on that, but we need to get into, say, Lord, teach me how to receive. Not grudgingly, not, uh, oh, there's, I have no choice. If I want to go here, I have to receive this. I have to go through this but a hearing from God so that everything I receive from the Lord, there is an impartation of spirit and life. God wants to put so much life in me as he did in Enoch that I just keep right on walking. There are going to be a people in the end time that just keep right on walking. They're going to be alive and remain. Oh, I wish we could hear that. Or they're going to be alive and consistent. Why? Because spirit and life have been imparted to them or made available to them, and they received it. Proverbs 1 and 3. Now, the whole book of Proverbs is to receive instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. All of those things are needed by kings. And we need to let God work them in us. Instruction and wisdom can be received. Now you can hear wisdom and not receive it. Instruction and justice can be received. There's one that we really need. Because, see, social justice is invading the church. But that's not God's justice. God's justice is balanced. God's justice is different. God's justice is based on certain absolutes. The world today is backing away from any absolutes. If it feels good, do it. If it sounds good, do it. Listen to it. Receive it. No. God has absolutes. He is absolute truth, and his absolute truth is balanced out with mercy, as we've seen in another, uh, in our teaching on Proverbs. Instruction and judgment can be received. Remember, we're to grow up into him in all things. Grow up into him in wisdom, into the head in wisdom. Grow up into the head in justice. Grow up into the head in understanding and receiving judgment. And grow up in instruction, in equity or balance that God wants to give us. I had come to, I've come to the conclusion that although God's called me to be a man of balance, I do not know what balance is. Uh, And so the Holy Spirit must lead me into the truth concerning balance. Proverbs 8 and 10. Receive my my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. Wisdom is speaking here. We need to value what God values. God values wisdom. God values instruction. God does not value silver and gold. Silver and gold are a means to finance the kingdom. But the kingdom is an internal thing. The furthering of the kingdom can be financed by silver and gold. But remember, silver and gold, at least silver, (laughs) is going to pass away. If we believe that that the city the holy city is a literal uh, thing, and, and I never do away with that. If we believe it's a literal place, a literal building, then there's going to be gold in heaven. And it's going to be pure gold, transparent. 
But remember, it's pavement. The streets are the pavement in heaven is gold. Well, we won't go there. Okay. Proverbs seven or no, ten and verse eight: The wise, wise in heart, will receive commandments, but the prating fool shall fall. The receiving of commandments are the receiving of the instructions of God, the rhema word of God, and hearing it not just uh, in our own spirit, but hearing it from others and witnessing too that it is the instruction of the Lord, or the commandment of the Lord. The wise in heart are willing to submit, which receiving commandment speaks of. Proverbs 19 and verse 20, Hear counsel and receive instruction, that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. Oh, I wish we could hear this. Not immediately, but after God has deposited the composite of wisdom and years in us through, through both the spoken word, the rhema word, the written word, and the experiences of life in which the Holy Spirit has instructed us. Many go through things, but they never gain wisdom because they don't hear what God is saying in the midst of it, whether it be opposition against them, whether it be something they're going through that's good. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> Pardon me. There's a difference between hearing and receiving. Here we are told to hear counsel and receive instruction from the counsel. This points up to us that we can hear but not receive anything from it. Oh, I wish we could hear that. In 2 Kings 17, 24 to 41, we have the historical account of the beginning of the people, of the Samaritan people. They were a mixture of Jews and Assyrians. We see their worship of God and how they came to it is shown. These people listened to the counsel of the men sent to teach them and did just enough to keep the lions away. Although they hear the counsel, heard the counsel, they only put enough into practice to placate God, as it were. It's not that God approved of the way they did things. It's, it is just that God allowed them in his mercy to get away with it. He knew the time of reckoning would come and the price would be paid. Often what happens is we, could I put it this way? We're inoculated with God so that we have just enough of God to keep us from getting the radical disease or a love for him, a red-hot love for him, a fervent love for him. And so many Christians today are inoculated and so they're almost, uh, uh, could we put it in the language of, of what's going on in the earth today? They are now immune from the deeper things of God. And they do enough to keep their salvation. Now, I'm not going into, can you uh, lose your salvation and all that stuff. I'm, I'm just, I'm just making these comments along the way to try and get us to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Are we really hearing? Jeremiah talks about people that hear but don't hear. Many hear counsel with the outer ear and often put them, and often. Uh, put the actions in place, but their heart has not caught the counsel, and therefore their lives are not changed. God wants us to hear with the ear of the Spirit in our spirit and catch the spirit of the matter. When we do this, we have received instruction, and out of our spirit will come the right action with the proper motivation. Jeremiah 5.21 says, Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes 
and see not, and have ears and hear not. Malachi 3 and 10 says, Bring all the tithe into the storehouse. that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. God wants to bless his children. In some of the promises of God, there are conditions. Oh, I wish we could hear that. On others, there is none. In either case, God wants us to receive blessing. If God pours out blessing, it's important for us to receive what God's pouring into our lives. Many are not blessed because when God pours out blessing on any level, they try in their mind to justify what they're receiving. I am receiving this because of what I've done. But remember, God pours out in his mercy. We reject it if we do not think we have deserved it, thereby doing despite to the grace of God. Oh, I wish we could hear that. Some, some of these statements are more impactful today to me than when I wrote them years ago in that course. Jeremiah 5 and 3, O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they refuse to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. Now, by the law of converse interpretation, we find that we must receive correction. One of the most difficult things for man to do is to receive correction. It means that I must admit that I've been wrong in a given area. This strikes a blow to my pride, which in many of us is large. When we receive instruction by correction, it's not enough to change our actions. When we truly receive correction, our motivation is corrected to such an extent that the action that drew attention to the motivation can be carried out and in a different attitude, one of humility and submission that can be sensed by those who before sensed the need for correction. Oh, I wish we could hear that. That's a, uh, this is more than just doing the right thing. God is dealing with the heart. God is endeavoring to correct the heart of man. Now in Matthew 19 and 29, And everyone that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or fathers, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. Now, listen carefully, because many have, have used this again for the prosperity gospel. And, and although God wants us to prosper, the natural level of these things is the lowest level of fulfillment of the, of the word. God wants to take it beyond that into the realm of the soul and into the realm of the spirit and bring us into a greater place. There, there is a giving that God wants to do in the body of Christ that many are not open for. When we leave all to follow him in whatever dimension, we find there comes into our life a sense that we do not deserve to have any replacements in our life. Because of this, we fight God bringing into our life replacement. We may have had our natural relatives close at hand, and they may even have been impediments to our walk with God because we treated them with undue respect. 
we feel that God will punish us by making us walk through life without any relationships as close as those we had. This is not the purpose of the heart of God. He wants to give us the other. He wants to give us replacement. And when God restores, he restores better than what it was in the first place. Oh, I wish we could hear that. receiving in this life. In the passage in Mark 10 and 30, it says these will be recovered in, in this time, in my lifetime. The one qualification of Mark passage is that it will be with persecutions. God wants to give as we put the kingdom first, houses, brethren, sisters, mothers, children, and lands to his children. The persecution, I believe, could be related to the pressures that are spoken of in our text. All of these things the receptors speak of. If we had time, we would go into all the scriptures on receive. We would find many other truths. God could not have given his only son if no one would have received him. It is true that love gives without expecting uh, in return. But in the foreknowledge of God, he knew others would receive. Therefore, he gave. Let's pray. God of all grace, we ask for the grace to walk in humility with an attitude to receive. We recognize that the natural human of this age has inherent pride that would keep him or her from receiving from others. We're taught a falsehood that maturity is independence. When the truth is is spiritual maturity, is interdependence by choice. Would you convince a people of that and bring them into that level of maturity? It is a work only your Holy Spirit can do, so we ask him to do it in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In looking at all this, it's important to be able to receive not just the negatives, but the positives of God. Here is uh, our websites that have more teaching on them that hopefully will be helpful to you. And here is our contact information. Those of you that have been watching these consistently, uh, probably know it off by heart by now, but just let me remind you that the snail mail address is there for those who uh, are not comfortable with uh, sending comments and questions via the Internet or in contributing via the Internet. If God speaks to you and we ask that you pray and ask Him uh, to give, to keep this ministry on the Internet, uh, then we ask that you make the checks out to ISCL. And um, in doing that, it will be able to be receded at the end of the year. Our webpage uh, is www.drwmjhurst.com. And there you can find uh, CDs, uh, and DVDs for purchase, both individual messages and series. And at this current time, we are uh, cataloging many that have not been cataloged, and the, avail the list availability will be up sometime by the end of the summer. Uh, also, there are courses there uh, for personal enrichment or to study so that you can obtain credits towards an ecclesiastical degree from the Institute for Strategic Christian Leadership. Uh, also on that page, you will find a donate button, and we ask that you ask the Lord how you can help us keep this ministry uh, on the Internet. This is Dr. William J. Hurst. Teaching all nations the practical word of God and mentoring students one student at a time.